Good morning. We greet you in the name of Christ as we gather for worship this beautiful day. Um, today we're talking about Jesus stilling the storm for the disciples when they were having a rough time on the, on the Sea of Galilee. And, you know, there's always, uh, in my mind at least, connections between what happened uh, in Jesus' ministry and what happens to us today. So we may not have a, a storm that we're uh, dealing with, although until the last couple of weeks, we had storms all over the place. But, uh, you know, uh, there are storms that happen in life, and those we have to deal with as well. So I'm going to ask that we would uh, stand and sing. The praise team will come up, and uh, we will... Begin with our worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we approach the time of confession today, uh, we just remember our response to the storms and chaos sometimes of life. And just like the disciples in the middle of that storm were, uh, what can I say, a little bit worried, and their faith began to waver a bit until Jesus came and said, peace. So, as we uh, make confession of our sins this day, uh, we just recall those times when our faith has wavered and uh, we lack trust and we look to God for forgiveness. Let's take a few moments in silent confession. I have good news for us this day. Uh, Jesus continues to say, peace be still through our troubled hearts. And in the name of Jesus, all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in response to that, uh, we sing the next song, Lord reign in me.
Let us pray together. O oh God, creator, owner, and preserver of all that is, guide and govern us by your steadfast love that we may always revere and adore your holy name. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Job 38, 1, 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge, dressed for action like a man? I will question you and make it known to me. Where were, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were it... On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, the psalm is from 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say it had not been the Lord who was on our side. When people rose up against us, when they would have swallowed us up alive, when their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 6, 1 to 13. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love. By truthful speech and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the, for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and as yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and is yet not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children. Widen your hearts, but also, this is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. After leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. 
He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated in the next song. Uh, Trade My Sorrows really hits what St. Paul and Bryce read it there in, in 2 Corinthians. And all I can say is, uh, well, first of all, I love it that this we have the, the young singers up in front today. I mean, that tells us there's a great future for the church of Jesus because of these young people and their faithfulness and love for him. And uh, at any rate, I love it that the text, so we had Job talking about God's creation. We had the psalm saying, when the torrents rushed over us, God was with us. And then this text from 2 Corinthians about all these problems that St. Paul experienced. So at any rate, uh, I'm going on here. I'm not even preaching yet. So, but let's sing the next song, Trade My Sorrows. So I'm doing something quick for the children. It looks like we may not have a children's church folk today anyway. But did you notice that in the text today, Jesus is asleep in the stern on a cushion? And uh, I just wondered, you know, was it something like this? 
you know, a little blankie that he was sleeping on after a long day and, you know, the waves and all that kind of stuff. Well, who knows? But I know that children out there at home and, uh, can I say, adult children have blankets, pillows, stuffed animals that we love and hold on to, and they mean so much to us to have things like that. We won't go to sleep, we'll travel with them, all kinds of stuff. So, I just want you to think today of Jesus in that way. He's kind of our security blanket, and you know, when the storms of life get rough, uh, we can always call on Him, and He will answer and say, peace, be still. So, because this segues so nicely into the text today, this is also Senior Recognition Day. So I am glad to have a couple of seniors here today. There's Kennedy, and there's Audrey, and Kaylin was there in the first service. If you're willing to come up, come up. If you're too embarrassed, stay, stay back, but that's okay. These, these kids uh, today, what can I say? So, uh, now you don't have to come up. You're not a, you're not a high school senior. You can... You're, you're a senior, but not a high school senior. <laughs> and that's great, too. We honor seniors in every way. Uh, but anyway, Kennedy and Audrey are here. And we have uh, some people at the church who make blankets. And these blankets we always give to high school seniors. And, you know, if you're going to college or work or whatever you're doing afterwards, this is just a way to remember your church family at Bethel. And these have been prayed over and blessed and uh, so let's, let's honor these two, Audrey and Kennedy. Let's just give them a hand. You know, graduation is, is a huge thing. So do you want to tell us what you're doing? Um, I'm going to University of Texas at Tyler, double majoring in political science and mass communication. Oh, man, political science and mass communication. And Kennedy. I'm going to Blinn, which is in Bryan. Uh, it's a feeder school for Texas a and M. I don't know what I want my major to be yet, so I'm spending two years there to figure it out, and then I'm headed off to A&M after that. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, what can I say? Having had a, well, one of my daughters went to school and became what she wanted to be, a nurse, but now she's a nurse practitioner. The other two changed majors, so you never can tell. Uh, you let God lead. So anyway... You can have a blanket, so you have a choice here of three. Uh, I have this one too, uh, but those are wrapped up. So you ladies. I'll let you choose whatever you want first. Okay. Well, go ahead, Audrey. Your Kennedy is being very gracious, and she's given your first choice here. And uh, like I say, this is also a choice. Ah, the pink one nobody wants for some reason. I don't know about that, but uh, thank you. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are so grateful to our high school seniors and what can I say? I, I, I told you before about this group of singers, you know, our young folk. All I'm saying is uh, I think the church of Jesus is in good hands with young people like this going on. And I remember both these kids in confirmation class. What can I say? We spent some long hours together learning the catechism and all that good stuff. Uh, those are all good times. So, hey, thanks. You can go back to your seats, and we will continue with, I guess, the sermon. All right. Uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text again is that gospel reading I already read, but uh, it's kind of interesting to me. A lot of people love boats and lakes and fishing and boating and the beach and all that kind of stuff. But in our uh, vocabulary, we have a lot of words that talk about bad things dealing with water. So you can be underwater on your car loan, which means you owe more than the car is worth. Or you can be drowning in debt or drowning in sorrows and worries. Uh, you know, we talk about people who are in over their head. And that means, you know, what they're supposed to do is, is not uh, their, their abilities and talents don't meet that. And none of us wants to be going down for the third time. So I'm just saying that we have terminology uh, that sometimes has bad things dealing with, you know, water and the beach and all that kind of other stuff. Uh, in today's gospel, the disciples are basically in over their head. 
And it's interesting, they are experienced fishermen. They know the Sea of Galilee, which, by the way, is not a sea at all. It's a lake. It's, fresh, it's huge, it's, but it's a freshwater lake on the River Jordan. And, you know, they fish there all the time. And they knew boats. But in this particular occasion, uh, they were over their head because there was a storm and it was filling up the boat. By the way, recent archaeology has uncovered some of these boats. And the one they were in was probably 25 feet long and seven feet wide. That's some boats that have been discovered. That doesn't seem that big to me. I mean, for 13 people. Uh, but uh, that was the boat they were in. And it was about to get swamped because the storm was so bad. Uh, Jesus was tired. He had had a long day preaching and teaching and healing and being with people. So uh, he was asleep, of all things, in the stern of the boat. And there was probably a little shelf under which he was resting so the rain wasn't coming down on him. But he was fast asleep, and the twelve woke him up. Jesus, don't you care? We're about to die here. Well, Jesus did care. And he got up, and he rebuked the storm, and he also rebuked the disciples. Where is your faith? You know, don't you trust me? Even in this and uh, it's interesting to me, if the disciples had been afraid during the storm, which they were, they were even more afraid now because they were thinking, who are we dealing with? He has power to control the wind and the waves. And again, I think Mark included this account in his gospel so that we would see that the power of Jesus is unfathomable. I mean, creator of all that is. And yes, Jesus has power even over nature. It's interesting to me that the church of Jesus has often compared our lives to this account from the Bible. So, you know, I know I've, I've said this many times, but the place where you guys are sitting technical name for this part of the church is called the nave, N-A-V-E. And uh, that's from the Latin word for boat. You know, we get the word navy from it. You know, all those nautical words come from that word. And, and so the church is like a ship. And it is, you know, sailing in the journey of life. And the storms that the disciples experienced are like the storms we experience. They may be real storms, you know. My uh, oldest daughter in Austin, they had a storm a few weeks ago and a huge branch went through the roof of their garage, you know. But I, I think we also think of the storms in life as just of all the troubles that we undergo, you know, the challenges and anxieties and, and everything else. So just like the disciples had those, that storm, uh, we have storms too. And then the disciples crying out for help are like the prayers that the church offers to God. And I think there's even something to be said for Jesus being asleep. You know, there are times we think God is asleep. You know, God, how many times have I prayed about this? When are you going to do something about this? I just want you to know that God does things in His time, but He does care, and He will calm the storm. Sometimes we just have to be patient with Him. Uh, and then another thing, too. The disciples, what can I say? They had doubts. Their faith wasn't rock solid and hard all the time. And is that not also true of us? You know, there are times when we have a hard time trusting God uh, when the storms of life come upon us. So, uh, and by the way, in early Christian art, the church was often depicted as, as a ship on the sea of this world. So this account the church has embraced for many, many years as being uh, kind of the way life is like for us as well. 
But the text is calling us to something better, something greater. And um, many of you know I just got back from uh, being with my middle daughter, had our third child, you know, so I've got a, I got a new granddaughter, and that's fun. But, you know, we were there at the house, and oh my goodness, bring a new baby in, and there is chaos. And uh, if those of you who have been parents know, you ask the question, is the house ever going to be clean again? Am I ever going to get any sleep again? You know, is, 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 what's going to happen with all this? And, you know, there's just, there's just all kinds of chaos going on in life. I, I, we know uh, that works itself out. That is okay. But, uh, you know, it's not just new parents. All of us have stuff that is going on in our lives. Especially in these days when we've dealt with COVID for so long. You know, there's, there's all kinds of challenges. For some it's financial, for some it's emotional, for some it's family, work, school, all those things. And then when the unexpected strikes, whether that's an illness that puts you in the hospital, whether that is, uh, you know, well, <laughs> the tree coming through the roof of your house. Something big breaks down. You know, all this kind of stuff happens. And that's not to mention just the minor inconveniences we have to deal with every single day. You know, got to get the car inspected or, you know, got to get this email sent or whatever. Uh, all I'm saying is all of us experience the, the storms of life in various capacities. Um, it's very interesting to me that in Genesis chapter 1, uh, there are two words used to describe creation before God stepped in. Formless and void. Uh, there are other translations. You could call it chaos and emptiness. So what happened when God created the world was he brought order to the chaos and he brought fullness to the emptiness. The creator of heaven and earth is still at work doing that for us today. Uh, you know, I know some people thrive on chaos, but not forever. Uh, we all need someone to say, peace, be still, like Jesus did. Uh, and uh, all of us face emptinesses of various sorts, you know. Um, I know this last year has been a challenge for especially people who are isolated, you know, just not seeing people. So the good news for us is that Jesus continues to bring order to the chaos of our lives and continues to fill the emptiness of our lives as the Lord of creation. The challenge is one of faith, just like the disciples. Are we going to trust that God will take care of this and do these things for me as he has always done? Can I let go and let God take over? Can I let go of worry and anxiety and anger and leave it all to God? Uh, well, uh, you and I know that is easier said than done. Uh, and yet, that's the kind of faith the Holy Spirit gives us. I don't know how many times I've read this account from the Bible. I don't even know how many times I've preached on it. But, you know, whenever I look at the Bible, there's always something new. And as I was reading about this particular text, that word for cushion that Jesus' head was on can also be translated something more like personal pillow. And I kind of wonder, uh, did Jesus have his own personal pillow that he carried around him? You know, in those days, uh, you know, it wasn't like every house had nice bedding and pillows and that kind of stuff, but it may be that if you found something you liked, you kept carried around with you. Uh, there is no way of us knowing that. But I kind of like to think of that. 
Jesus having his own personal pillow. I mean, Jesus is God. He needs no props of any kind. And yet, uh, I, I think of, uh, of, of Jesus being a human being. You know, did Jesus have comfort food? Was there some kind of food that he really enjoyed eating? Uh, and we know that he had friends. You know, even among the 12, there were the three, Peter, James, and John, who were kind of that inner circle. So maybe Jesus needed those special friends. And maybe, just maybe, he had his own personal pillow that he carried with him and slept on in the back of a boat in the middle of a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Again, we'll never know. Uh, but I think for us, uh, it's good to think of Jesus as, as God and man. And it's okay for us to, to do those things. You know, there, I know people who have prayer shawls or prayer blankets that they use when they're at prayer. And I would, I, I would just encourage you to think of Jesus as your own personal prayer blanket, you know, who covers you with his warm and generous love and who is always there for you amidst whatever storms of life may be there. Because let's face it, we all have storms. Some of them may be hurricanes. Some of them may be just slight gusts. But in a fallen and broken world, that is our reality. Nothing is perfect for us. But Jesus on the cross redeemed this stormy world. And he is continually at work restoring the creation bit by bit. And he speaks peace still to the storms of our lives. Will we trust in his power and his love and his care? Uh, we do. And we will. For the Lord of creation is also the Lord of me. He is my Lord too. And the power to still the winds and the waves is also the power to bring peace to the storms of your life and mine as well. So we rest in His almighty arms, finding peace in His grace and love for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we now stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Maybe seated for just a second here. I just uh, have a couple things I wanted to share, and that is, uh, you know, most of you know, uh, what can I say? I'm retiring here in uh, like a month. It's kind of hard to believe that that's all coming, but I hope that you will all be involved in that celebration on the weekend of uh, the 16th, 17th, and 18th of July. Uh, I just want you to know that this, you know, it's, it's, it's out with the old and in with the new. The day I walk out the door, the day after that, they're going to start uh, refurbishing the sanctuary. You know, we had this big capital drive. So guess what? The pews are coming out. A new color scheme, new lighting, new flooring. And uh, the council just approved that this last week. So uh, all I'm warning you of is this. Uh, I won't be here. No, it's not my problem. But... Uh, there will have to be some adjustments to how worship will be done. So it may be that uh, Bethel spends a few weeks 
down in the gym. And we've done this before. Uh, we're always adaptable, and that's kind of a, a cool thing about Bethel. Always been flexible, but I'm just warning you that that will happen. And uh, just for your heads up. Um, and uh, I guess I just wanted to say, too, that uh, uh, Grace Nimick, who is going to be our youth worker, our youth DCE, actually was here for the last three weeks, but she's um, going to be coming on board officially on, in August 1st. Uh, Brianna back there is helping out with a lot of things, and Brianna and Grace, they did a uh, babysitting night. And what did you raise, like 600 bucks for the youth mission trip, something like that? Yeah, and then they had a family night the week after that, so a lot of cool things happening here at the church, so keep it in your prayers. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, Tracy, how's your dad? We're going to pray for him today. Um, well, he got removed after the hospital. He was over by on Lowell Water. Oh, sure, right down the street. Yeah. Well, uh, we're praying for, uh, for Jack Pogue, longtime member of uh, Bethel, and I had a sweet... Well, I will just say this. It doesn't often happen to us pastors, but I was there in the hospital room with Jack, and he said, I love you, Pastor. Uh, I just, ah, uh, what can I say? It warms my pastoral heart. Uh, uh, just, I did, I'm just telling you, uh, people don't often say those kinds of things, and, and, and it's just kind of cool. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that, except that we're going to pray for Jack here. But uh, right now, let's continue with uh, the prayers. And today is Father's Day. So we're going to have a prayer especially for fathers. And uh, let's go ahead and stand for this time of prayer. God the Father, through the lives of fathers here on earth, you have carried out your plan to save. From generation to generation, our fathers have been blessed by you. God the Father, through our ancestor Abraham, you brought a holy nation to life. Bless our fathers with trust in the promises granted to God's children. God the Father, through King David, you brought prosperity to the children of Israel. Bless our fathers with the resources to provide for their families in good times and bad. God the Father, through the priest Zechariah, you ushered a son into the world named John the Baptizer, who would proclaim the coming of the Savior. Bless our fathers with the courage to speak the gospel message to their children. God the Father, through Joseph of Nazareth, you fulfilled the prophecy that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Bless our fathers with an obedience to your will for the future of their families. God the Father, through your son's suffering and death, you brought us back into a relationship with you. And by him, we now can cry, Abba, Father. Bless our fathers with a desire to be drawn closer to you. God the Father, through the lives of the fathers of this time and place, continue to make salvation known. And we praise you, God our Father, creator and preserver of all that is. We thank you, Jesus, for being a safe place for us, bringing peace to our sometimes chaotic lives. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to increase our faith. We pray for the suffering, especially naming Jack Pogue, Kenneth Thackett Jr., Barbara Newman, Teresa Harrington, Mark Carlson, and others we name in our hearts that you grant healing. We pray for the family of former member Fred Duco on the death of his father. We pray for these families of our congregation by name, Jim Bodecker, Judy Brantley and family, Sherry Earle, Jim Frank, Bernie and Ginny Wilcox, Joel and Gail Winningham, Ruth Woodward, Jacob and Sarah Worley and family, Jose and Marie Saavedra, asking that you remember them and your mercy. Lord, the pandemic still rages in some countries and areas, and we pray continue to reduce cases and deaths worldwide. Help people to look out for the interests of others and bless people as they recover 
from months of challenges due to the virus. We pray for our graduating seniors, especially naming Kaylin, Audrey, and Kennedy, asking that you bless their future endeavors and keep them in your care always. We pray for all who receive Holy Communion, that your body and blood, dear Jesus, would strengthen them. We pay all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who intercedes for us at the Father's right hand and who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And um, some of you here for the first time, uh, the, the COVID procedures for communion are simply come up and receive the uh, wafer in your outstretched arm or hands, and then you will be handed the... Uh, the uh, individual cup, the uh, blood of Jesus, and then we just ask that you would um, circle through and come up by families and uh, come up after the singing of the Agnus Day. So our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join now in the Agnus Day.
And now may this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, give you strength, preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And we say it for the last song, All Creatures of Our God and King. This is by St. Francis of Assisi. He wrote the words of this, oh, I don't know, 600 years ago. Uh, what can I say? The church still sings it. Let's stand. As we go, I just noticed Gabrielle chose as the postlude today, Wade in the Water. And that's perfect because uh, we now have a new national holiday. Uh, yesterday was Juneteenth. We Texans can claim pride of place, I guess, in that holiday because it was the day that, uh, what can I say, that was announced to the slaves in Galveston. They were free. So I'm looking forward to hearing Wade in the Water. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.